All right, so in this podcast, we're going to look at some solution basics and a little bit of calculations. All right, so first off, just a little overview. Solutions are homogeneous mixtures, which means that you can't separate um, the parts easily, um, in which the physical properties are dependent on the concentration of the solute and the strengths of all the interactions amongst the particles of the solutes and solvents. Sounds like a whole bunch of big words there, so let's break it down. A solute is a substance that is dissolved in the solution. So, for example, it's the salt in the water, or the sugar in a Coke, or the carbon dioxide in a Coke. Okay, so it's the thing that's being dissolved. The solvent is what is doing the dissolving. Okay, so uh, it's water in salt water, or water in soda. Nine times out of ten, for our purposes, the solvent is usually going to be water. Water is known as the universal solvent. So here's another picture, just a molecular level picture, showing you that the um, solute is the little particles that are being uh, broke up and spread out, and then the solvent is the actual medium that they are being distributed into. Solutions can um, be in the form of a solid, a liquid, or a gas. So um, here we have an alloy example. So an alloy is an example of a solution in a solid form. And then the ones we're most familiar with are liquids, so like salt water. And then, like our actual air, is a solution of different gas molecules. Um, if it's a liquid solution, the solute, what's being dissolved, can be a gas, another liquid, or a solid. So here's some examples. So acetone in water, there's a liquid in a liquid. Here we have some sort of salt being dissolved in water. And then here we have carbon dioxide being um, dissolved in water to make a carbonated drink. All right, here's some other examples. If you would like to um, look through them, you can pause the podcast, kind of get a little bit more of a feel. All right, so what is concentration exactly? So concentration is a quantitative measure of the amount of solute in the solution. So it tells us how much solute do we have dissolved in the solution. So here you see you have very few blue little solute molecules. So this is a dilute solution. As compared to this one, we have a whole bunch of blue. So that's a concentrated solution, okay? So concentration is going to tell us that. One way that we measure concentration is through molarity. Molarity is defined as the um, amount of moles of a solute that are dissolved in the liters of solution, okay? So molarity is capital M and it equals moles of solute over liters of solution. Here's an example molarity problem. So it wants us to determine the molarity um, given that we have 95.6 um, grams of calcium chloride and that's dissolved in a 1.25 liter solution. All right, so first off for molarity, we know that molarity is equal to moles over liters. <laughs> And we're looking for molarity, so this is our unknown over here. And then we have liters. Our liters are 1.25. We don't have moles, but what we do have is we have grams. We can convert from grams to moles using the molar mass. So we have 95.5 grams over 1. All right, and then our molar mass is going to go on the bottom, 1 mole on top. So our molar mass of calcium chloride is 110.986 grams. Okay, so we get 95.5 divided by that molar mass, and we find out that our moles are 0.86. So we got 0.86 moles divided by our liters, which was 1.25, and that's going to give us our molarity. So 0.86 divided by our 1.25, and our molarity is 
six, eight, eight molar. So there's your answer. All right, looking at another molarity example, this one is asking us for the amount of potassium bromide in grams that should be added to um, prepare a half liter solution that has a concentration of 1.25. So this one we're asked to solve for something a little different. So again, there's our molarity calculation. We know that our molarity is 1.25, and that is equal to our moles, which we don't know moles, so that's our X value, over our liters, and we have 0.5. 5 liters. So to solve this, I'm going to cross multiply up my 0.5 and I'm going to get a moles answer of 0 0.0625 moles. Now I can go from moles to grams because that's what I want here. I want grams. So moles to grams. So I'm going to put one mole on bottom and the molar mass of potassium bromide on top. Our molar mass of potassium bromide is 119 grams. So we multiply across, so 0 0.625 times 119. We need 74 grams of potassium bromide.